The Anne Arundel County Public School District in Maryland has instructed teachers and faculty to let transgender students bunk overnight with other students of the gender which they identify and not tell parents. In a video of a June meeting titled Supporting Transgender Students in School, Bob Mosier, the district's chief communications officer, told teachers and administrators how to handle transgender issues at overnight school-related events, commenting, the private information piece doesn't allow you to share the overnight presence of transgenders with parents of all of the other campers. Recently, a federal judge in Texas blocked the president's order that schools must allow transgender students access to such facilities consistent with their gender identity, saying that the law about the biological and anatomical differences between male and female students is not ambiguous. At least 11 states have sued the Obama administration in May over its transgender directive in their schools, but the problem is not transgenders, it's government schools. You see, most folks assume that the public schools were introduced and developed in order to ensure that the American populace could read and write and conduct business, but this is a myth. At the time of the reform movements of the 1830s and 40s, some experts postulate adult male literacy in the colonies ran from 70 to 100%. Since we are much worse off in 2016 from a literacy standpoint, why did there exist a desire for state-controlled schools? Primarily, there were two motivating factors. The first was the desire to destroy the Christian foundations of America. The second was the humanistic belief that salvation was attainable through education. In his book, A Basic History of the United States, Clarence B. Carson concluded, the most zealous of the reformers were determined to use the power of the state by the way of schools to break the hold of the religious tradition and the inherited culture, to change society through the child's training. Perhaps the best known of these reformers who pushed the agenda of public schools was Horace Mann. Contrary to biblical teaching, Mann believed that the state ought to be the true parent of the child. Thus it was the state that had the primary responsibility of providing education. Now, along with Mann and some of his followers, including Abram Combe and his son Robert Dale Owen, who later formed a secret society to work towards attaining his goals, Arrestus Brownson, one of the leaders of this society, later wrote about the work of the group. The great objective was to establish a system of state, we said national, schools from which all religion was to be excluded, in which nothing was to be taught but such knowledge as is verifiable by the census, and to which all parents were to be compelled by law to send their children. Well, there you have it, quite clearly stated. The purpose and mission of the public schools, which were to be free to everyone at the expense of everyone, was to get rid of Christianity and to compel parents to give their children over to the state so that they can be trained to disrespect their parents and their Christian republic and its moral culture without parental interference. Unless and until education is done God's way under the influence, control, and jurisdiction of the family, there is no hope for any improvement, transgender, or otherwise, because the problem, once again, is not what happens in government schools, it's the schools themselves. This is Jake McCauley with the Institute on the Constitution, bringing you the American View.